I've just finished um, working with the tail here. I did what I said I would do, and I put a little piece of scotch tape here, and a little piece of scotch tape here, only about that long, and wrapped it around. And now these um, have some resistance to them so they don't move. So now you can see that uh, uh, when I move the servo here, the rudder, um, those pushrod guides stay put. So no, no more bending up the pushrod, bowing, and all that. So that's good. The uh, tail rotor um, limits are still good. I was afraid that maybe if the pushrod was bending a little bit, that that would mean I needed to go back and adjust my limits, but I didn't have to. Um, I haven't spooled it up in a, in a little while, so let me do that. I don't feel any vibration. It sounds very good. I'll hold it in my hand a little bit just so I can feel it better. I'm getting left run, right run. It sounds very nice. Um, this one. That's what I like the most about the Black Angel, is that without this tail drive gear, that's normally right here for the torque tube or the belt, without that drive there, there's just much less um, gear mesh going on. Um, you know, it's really the only gear mesh is between the motor pinion and the main gear right here. So uh, there's a you know a fair amount of noise that comes from these gears meshing here and then with the tail drive here and then again with the torque tube, that sort of thing. So, and then, you know, also on torque tube down here. So uh, this cuts down on a lot of noise, really, and I really like that. My first Black Angel came with carbon fiber, fiber rotor blades and tail rotor blades, and it was very, very quiet. But uh, this particular one that I just got, it came with plastic blades and, um, you know, wooden, wooden uh, main rotor blades, so I'm not too happy about that, but I was going to replace them anyway. I've got, um, I've got blades that uh, I wanted to use, so it's not a big deal for me, but for somebody that's had a Black Angel before and expected to get carbon fiber blades with this DFC kit, um, it might be disappointing. So anyway, what I want to do now is I've got, you know, everything on still. Um, I've got this uh, little turnage, it's a one and a half millimeter, you know, hex driver, you know, just for all the little screws and whatnot. But I use this thing a lot when it comes to um, getting zero pitch, because that's what we want to do now. Uh, I've leveled the swash plate, right, if you remember, uh, not too long ago. I leveled the swash plate, so I, I'm pretty confident that wherever I put this, um, I can use that point to measure for zero pitch. So I've gone into my transmitter, into the um, pitch curve, and I have set my transmitter, um, to start off with anyway, for zero degrees um, pitch at, at 50. So I have set my lowest endpoint for the pitch curve at 50 because 50 is where we want zero degrees on the blades. So I've set the lowest for 50, and I think I might have set the second one for 50, and the third, you know, 75, something like that. And the, the highest endpoint at 100. So that I'm going from 50 to 100 on my pitch curve when I'm in throttle hold. So I set my throttle hold pitch curve to be um, something that I use just for setup. So right now I have my throttle hold on. See, right here. I have my throttle hold on, and I have the pitch curve set for 50-50, um, 
60, 80, 100, or something like that. But um, 50 and 100 are the main things. So, I love to use this, because what you can do is drop it down through there. And now I can see. I'm going to use this tool here, this uh, one and a half millimeter hex driver. And I'm going to insert that in there and just let it drop. And I can see from this that I have a little bit of negative pitch. Not much, though. So, I could use my Copterex software to go in and adjust the uh, trim of the cyclic servos so that they all come up a little bit and um, raise the swash so that the pitch um, increases until it's zero degrees. Or I can remove these three links and um, rotate the uh, ball link a couple of times there um, to do the same thing. So I'd rather do it mechanically than using the software because and I've already leveled the swash and I don't really want to adjust the servos anymore. Um, so I'd rather do it mechanically and then maybe use the software um, if I still need to make a very small adjustment that, um, you know, would require like half a rotation or something like that on the uh, ball link. So, I'm going to stop here. I'm going to remove the three links from the swash plate and rotate them one rotation. And I'm going to screw them counterclockwise because I want to lengthen the uh, distance between the, the servo control arm there and the, uh, the swash ball. So, let me do that. What I did just now was um, adjusted the collective mix using the PC the CopterX PC software. I reduced it from minus 60 to a negative 55 and also um, I noticed that um, there was some binding when not just down collective um, at 12 degrees but uh, when it was full down collective and um, full aileron um, so what it was was the servos had a lot of travel in them and I reduced the aileron and the elevator travel in the Coptrack software as well to, um, I dropped it down to 60. It was at 80. And I dropped it down to 60. And um, no more, no more binding. Um, so I used this little nifty tool that I got from eHarobo.com that lets you add um, a fly bar the fly bar slips into it like this. It screws to the top. You have to remove the button head. You install this, slide the bar, fly bar through, and then you have a fly bar that you can use to check your pitch, yeah, uh, pitch degrees using an old-fashioned, I guess you could say, um, pitch gauge. Nowadays, you can get digital and uh, you don't have to sight it, you know, against a fly bar. But anyway, um, that's these are the two two tools that I just used, well, and and a pitch gauge to determine um, at what point I had 12 degrees. You know how much wash travel I needed to get to 12 degrees, and also to make sure that nothing was binding at the top and the bottom of the collective range. So I'll reinstall the button head. I won't go the old-fashioned way. It always works for me. You know, 
I'm just going to use a piece of packing tape. And then just cut pieces away until it seems to be balanced. <laughs> 